Hello and welcome to Flight Path. I'm Chris Jones, the Chief Marketing Officer for the Clark County Department of Aviation. Las Vegas is no stranger to big events like boxing and MMA matches, NASCAR races, the National Finals Rodeo, concerts, and music festivals. Now with a state-of-the-art stadium and multiple professional sports franchises, there are more reasons than ever to visit. Many who came here for special events will arrive by air, creating a wealth of opportunities for the airport and its partners. Las Vegas is quickly becoming not only a premier destination for entertainment, but for sports as well. Fans of college and pro football, hockey, basketball, boxing, and mixed martial arts are finding a lot to love about the destination. Walk on who is now on scholarship, and he knocks it through. When UNLV played Iowa State in football this season, there were more visiting fans in the stands at Allegiant Stadium than there were locals. That was no coincidence. Allegiant Air added flights to Las Vegas specifically for Cyclones fans, just as it had for a previous college matchup on the strip between BYU and the University of Arizona. This is not only the entertainment capital of the world, but this is the entertainment and sports capital of the world. Las Vegas is now the greatest arena on earth. What's really cool about sports then when it comes to aviation, the airline industry is, it matches up really nicely because you know which city a team is coming from. And so one of the cool things is we've been standing up fan charters, right? The Bears came out, we stood up three flights from Midway to Las Vegas simply for that game. Uh, and other airlines are doing the same thing. The airline also offered special flights from Baltimore and Kansas City when the Las Vegas Raiders hosted the Ravens and Chiefs. Even during the planning and construction of the 65,000 seat Allegiant Stadium, the first venue of its kind in Las Vegas, local leaders recognized the potential for attracting previously untapped markets to Southern Nevada. With the construction and the opening of uh, Allegiant Stadium, we learned an awful lot about visitors who come here for a specific purpose. And that has opened up a, a whole new experience for the Las Vegas uh, Resort Corridor and frankly, for Clark County. The airport is essential to travel that happens in Las Vegas. Airlines serving Las Vegas are able to plan ahead by studying NCAA and NFL schedules to see which cities fans might come from. Then they can market directly to residents in those locations. We're seeing fans come out of the woodwork for some of these major teams from all across the nation. And that was, as I like to call it, the canary in the coal mine that told us this was going to be big. Las Vegas's evolution as a sports town is about more than football. Along with marquee fights and special events, the Strip is also home to NHL and WNBA action. The airport plays a key role in accommodating visitors and fans, and when several events happen all at once, it takes coordination among stakeholders to maximize space for aircraft. We have limited space, and so what we've done is partnered with the different groups, the FAA, uh, Traffic Management, the Airport Control Center, the Airport uh, Ops Coordinator, and the FBOs, and the GA Airports, Henderson and uh, Northtown. And so with that group getting together, communicating, and deciding on how we're going to maximize uh, the space. High rollers aboard private jets and visiting teams, often with multiple aircraft, all benefit from the airport's convenient location. Juggling them can be challenging, especially when the fixed base operators, or FBOs, on the west side of the airfield at LAS begin to reach capacity. It's conveniently located on the west side of the airport where they're flying their private airplanes into. They can get right off their planes and literally be out the gate and be on the strip in just a matter of minutes. So that's the attraction. As Las Vegas reinvents itself to meet the changing demand of visitors, the Clark County Department of Aviation will continue to offer convenience in its airports, as well as an exceptional first and last look at this world-class destination. More and more travelers will be taking to the skies for the holidays, and that means the airport will be busy. From parking to pandemic travel protocols, here's what you need to know before you go. If you're traveling this holiday season, give yourself the gift of a stress-free airport experience by planning ahead and giving yourself plenty of time. Those who are traveling for the first time in a long time can expect to see some changes. Air travel has really picked up and we anticipate to be extremely busy for this upcoming holiday season. The parking structures do fill up really, really quick. So holiday travel should at least get here three hours prior to their departure. Staffing across the airport, from airlines to security to shops and restaurants, isn't yet at pre-pandemic levels. So travelers should anticipate longer wait times for some services. Parking will be in especially high demand. The Terminal 1 long-term garage, for example, is already filling to capacity most weekends. 
If you plan to park at the airport, arrive at least three hours prior to your flight time. That's because if the Terminal 1 garage is closed, customers will be redirected to available parking in the Terminal 3 long-term garage or to one of the airport's economy lots. These parking areas require a shuttle ride to the terminals for most customers. The shuttle drivers are in short supply nationwide. That means here in Las Vegas as well. And due to that nationwide driver shortage, wait times for shuttles are increasing. During especially busy times, the Terminal 3 garage and economy lot may fill. In that case, drivers will be redirected to the remote lot located on Gillespie across from the airport rental car center. Directions to the remote lot can be found on our website, mccarran.com forward slash parking. Reader boards will be updated in real time to reflect parking availability and ground transportation staff will be on hand to give directions to economy and remote lots. The airport's social media team will also post updates on its Twitter account. Follow at LAS Airport for information. Circling the airport waiting for arriving passengers creates congestion and wastes fuel. If you're circling around in the, on the roadways, it absolutely contributes to the congestion to the traffic. But using the cell phone lot is absolutely an easy breath. You can sit there and wait for your passenger until they arrive. The cell phone lot is free to use and conveniently located just minutes from the passenger pickup curbs at Terminal 1 and Terminal 3. Numbered columns on the curb make meeting up easy. Passengers should remember that masks are still required in the airport, on shuttles and trams, and on board aircraft. It's also wise to pack a snack, as some concessions may have limited hours. Check in for your flight at home. Pack light if you can to avoid lines at check-in, and don't forget your hand sanitizer. Research in advance whether COVID testing or vaccination is required by your destination. During peak holiday travel times, arrive early, and as always, pack your patience. Did you know the airport has its own team of sign makers? Small but mighty, this group of professionals is responsible for everything from office nameplates to airfield and roadway signs. Here's a look at the Department of Aviation sign shop. Everywhere you look in the airport, there are signs. Signs on the roadways and parking areas, wayfinding signs in the terminals, even pandemic era signs reminding travelers to wear a mask. Who creates these signs and how do they find their way to the public? In a workshop located underneath the airport's busy D concourse, a four-person team works behind the scenes designing and fabricating much of the airport's signage. It's our responsibility to make sure that every signage on the airport is uh, updated and uh, it's uh, safe. These sign makers use graphic design software to create their designs and special printers and materials to fabricate them. Once the work in the shop is done, they head up to the terminal, roadways, or airfield for installation. We have responsibility for signage that really uh, takes the passenger from where they access the airport from the roadways, uh, all the way in past the curb through ticketing, and all the way to their gate, and then absolutely back the other direction. So we have wayfinding signage pretty much everywhere to assist our passengers get wherever they need to go. Sign makers at LAS create everything from public-facing directional signs and airfield markers to safety messages in employee break rooms. Different areas call for different specifications, standards, and materials. For the sake of uniformity and clear communication, many signs feature international symbols seen in airports around the world. Most signage has standards that we follow. Uh, so for instance, if it's out on the airfield, uh, there's most certainly FAA standards and regulations that we have to follow. If it's out on our airport roadways or public roadways, we have to follow standards that are set by Department of Transportation. The airport sign shop provides valuable service in making sure airport customers know where to park and check in, how to get to the security checkpoint, and even where to grab a bite to eat. Each employee in the sign shop possesses valuable skills and works day to day, often on tight deadlines. They're also responsible for maintaining and replacing signs, such as those on the airfield which are prone to sun damage and must adhere to FAA standards, and even applying decals required for airport-owned vehicles. Many of their installation jobs have them maneuvering around the people and equipment involved in the busy operations of a bustling airport. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, the airport sign maker's work has been in high demand. Health guidance initially called for social distancing and hygiene messaging, and the sign shop delivered, sourcing materials and working tirelessly to print and install posters, floor decals, window clings, and more. The sign shop was integral in the rollout of the airport's health and safety public awareness campaign, LAS All In. The team ensured bold signage indicating temporary closures and capacity limits, as well as state and federal mask mandates, were in place in a timely manner. They kept pace as public health guidance and messaging evolved, replacing and removing signage as needed. And there is high demand for the sign shop always. They also consistently meet that demand and exceed everyone's expectations. They're just a fabulous group. Next time you're in the airport, making your way from the parking garage to your gate, 
or from your gate to baggage claim, follow the signs and know there's a dedicated team at LAS responsible for them. When the U.S. government lifted restrictions on foreign visitors, Las Vegas was ready to welcome its first transoceanic flights in well over a year. Vaccinated travelers were finally able to reunite with loved ones and take those bucket list trips, and a vital piece of the travel industry's recovery fell into place. Here's a look at the first post-pandemic overseas arrivals in Las Vegas. Hey, 18, 19 months, whatever it is later, we're back. Welcome back. Thank you very much. It's exciting to be here, I must admit. Nearly 20 months after the last transoceanic flight carrying tourists landed at LAS, Virgin Atlantic Airways returned to Las Vegas in November. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner touched down the same day policies for foreign national air travelers to the United States changed, allowing more vaccinated international visitors to enter the country. The flight was greeted in an only Vegas way with showgirls on the ramp waving in the plane. We are so excited because we welcome back our first over the pond international flight with Virgin Atlantic coming from Heathrow. We know the pent up feel for international was going to come back as quickly as domestic. So after the government's worked everything out with the protocol and the airline takes care of that with each of the passenger, we knew that this flight was gonna be filled and it is. The flight was a watershed moment for Las Vegas as international borders opened and Southern Nevada welcomed overseas visitors back to the destination. Seeing these uh, happy faces come in from the UK one of our most important uh, markets. They bring in about 730,000 uh, visitors, not just not just Virgin, but BA and other carriers. Uh, and the UK is just one of our top origin markets for the destination. Economically, international visitation roughly represents 15 to 20 percent of all visitors. In terms of economic impact, is uh, about 8.3 billion dollars to Las Vegas. The return of international air travel is the next critical step forward in the aviation industry's recovery from the impacts of COVID-19. As the gateway to Las Vegas, LAS looks forward to once again making it easier than ever to welcome the world to our iconic city. I'm really excited. Um, I mean, I'm so happy it hurts, to be honest. Um, I'm here to see some friends I haven't seen in a long time, been a couple of years. I haven't been on a plane for two years, so amazed to be back in Vegas, yeah. More carriers will resume overseas service to Las Vegas with more reunions to be made, many that will have lasting memories. It's huge because my mom, I haven't seen her for two years um, and she's coming in for my wedding. I'm getting married in a week and a bit, so she just made it just in time. <laughs> The airport was the backdrop for this year's Las Vegas Girls in Aviation Day, a special event geared toward introducing local young ladies to a variety of careers in the aviation industry. Each year, Women in Aviation International hosts Girls in Aviation Day events around the globe. The organization is a nonprofit dedicated to the encouragement and advancement of women in aviation careers. When they see it in person, it becomes bigger than life. And you also see the excitement of all the women that are in these positions. We've got pilots, flight attendants, security, mechanics, engineers, all different positions that women hold in aviation. And it really gets girls a nice, exciting way to help them with their career goals. The Las Vegas chapter partnered with the Clark County Department of Aviation, Allegiant Airlines, the Transportation Security Administration, and others to host the special experience at LAS. Some 50 girls with a wide range of career aspirations attended the event. I saw that there was engineering here, which I thought would be super, super cool, because I've always wanted to have like an engineering job. After checking in and going through security, the girls met up with TSA officers for an explosives detection canine demonstration. She's actually what they call a vaporwave dog, so she's actually trained to detect odor off of like a moving target. Then they proceeded to a gate where they boarded an Allegiant aircraft. Because as you guys will hear a lot today, safety is our number one priority with Allegiant. Once on board, pilots showed the girls the flight deck and controls used to fly the plane. First of all, I love aviation and I love what I do for a living and it's always fun to be able to share that information. Growing up, I didn't have much exposure to uh, airplanes or aviation and I didn't have any mentors. So it's nice to be able to provide information to young girls growing up to know that uh, they can do this. The girls also met with engineers and maintenance technicians and learned about the inner workings of avionic systems engines, air traffic control, airport safety, and aircraft maintenance. Sometimes you might be changing a tire, so 
Sometimes you might be working on the flight controls. And flight attendants demonstrated safety procedures. I'm the lead flight attendant. I'm the one that comes in and I make sure that everybody is doing their job. The event also included a scavenger hunt with a walk through the airport's aviation museum where the girls learned about highlights in local aviation history. How I found out Amelia Earhart. This year's Girls in Aviation Day was a welcome return to in-person learning as last year's program was held virtually. Seeing an aircraft up close and interacting with role models gave this next generation of female aviation professionals a unique perspective on the career and lifestyle possibilities in the aviation industry. Awesome, guys. Thank you. The annual convention of the National Business Aviation Association, or NBAA, is one of the largest trade shows in the United States, drawing thousands of visitors over a three-day period. After a one-year pause, NBAA was committed to bringing the show back to the Henderson Executive Airport and to doing so safely. With safety and sustainability in mind, NBAA hosted its annual convention at Henderson Executive Airport in October. As business travel makes a comeback, the trade show is just one recent example showing the travel industry's resiliency. NBAA Base is the world's largest business aviation event, and we love coming to Las Vegas because of its world-class facilities, but also the partnership that we have with the county, with the airports, is really unparalleled. What we have found is a community that shares our commitment to professionalism, to safety, to sustainability. The NBAA show last made an appearance in Clark County in 2019, generating approximately $40 million in economic activity throughout the week of the convention. It is so important that we welcome our trade shows back, make sure that they know that we are still here, we're still open for business, and we want them and their business in our community. Uh, the NBAA has been an incredibly important part of our economy here in Southern Nevada. It's been a close partnership with both the LVCBA and the Department of Aviation. NBAA is the leading organization for companies that rely on general aviation aircraft to help make their business more efficient, productive, and successful. The association represents more than 11,000 companies and professionals and provides more than 100 products and services to the business aviation community. This year's show included a commitment to being at the forefront of sustainability with the introduction of an all new carbon offset program. In addition, nearly 100 show exhibitors signed a green pledge, which offered multiple opportunities to limit their environmental impact during the convention. Also new in 2021 was a pandemic era focused on safety. A longtime industry leader, NBAA required all those attending to be vaccinated against COVID-19. The show highlighted the importance of Clark County's general aviation airports, with the Las Vegas community once again hosting large-scale events such as music festivals and pro sports. Facilities like Henderson Executive Airport provide a valuable service for the business aviation community. We all know that the general aviation airports are just absolutely essential and critical in, in any airport system and Henderson Executive Airport just has grown and developed and evolved in a way that we never thought possible. So we are really excited of where this is going. NBAA underscores the value of general aviation for corporate pilots by offering business aviation the opportunity to experience Henderson Executive Airport's elite customer service, top-notch amenities, and convenient location. The show helps generate repeat business throughout the year. There's a new low-cost carrier in town. Budget startup Avello launched service to Las Vegas in the fall. Here's a look at the airline's inaugural flight and its rapidly expanding routes. Three, two, one, go! Travelers looking for new ways to get away are in luck with Avello Airlines' new service at LAS. Avello became the first new scheduled airline in the U.S. in nearly 15 years when it began operating in April. It entered the Southern Nevada market in September with nonstop flights between Las Vegas and Santa Rosa in Sonoma County's wine country. We're offering extremely low fares, uh, but a, a very high level of service at the same time. And so we've got a low cost model that has been uh, really well received by customers so far. The budget carrier, whose main base is in Burbank, California, quickly expanded its presence at LAS. In addition to four times weekly service to Santa Rosa, the airline also offers twice-weekly non-stop service from the Redwood Coast Humboldt County Airport near Eureka, California. Beginning in December, Avello will offer non-stop service between Las Vegas and Fort Collins, Colorado. And in January, it will launch non-stop flights from Redding, California. Las Vegas is coming back strongly, wine country is coming back strongly, and so both ends of that uh, you know, we think you know, work really well. Avello's Las Vegas flights are a win-win, bringing more travelers to the entertainment capital of the world and creating more opportunities for local residents to experience the allure of California wine country 
the natural beauty of Northern California's national and state parks, and the year-round outdoor activities of Fort Collins. Clark County's airports embrace their role in minimizing the environmental impacts of airport operations by implementing sustainable practices such as recycling, water conservation, and energy efficient lighting. At LAS, a recent project to help airlines reduce their carbon footprint has also resulted in financial gain. Airlines require a sizable fleet of ground support equipment or GSE to operate at airports. Historically, tugs, baggage carts, air stairs, laboratory waste vehicles, and anything else used to get an aircraft loaded, fueled, and ready for takeoff have mostly run on gasoline. Several airlines that serve Las Vegas have converted their diesel fuel GSE to equipment powered by electricity. Obviously operating on electric power, uh, so it doesn't produce the emissions that your diesel powered equipment would produce. So as a member of the Clark County Department of Aviation, as, as a resident, I mean, this is beneficial to everyone within the community. To support those efforts, the Department of Aviation installed 67 electric vehicle charging stations for the airline's GSE, a project for which the department received a rebate check totaling $809,081 from NV Energy. The charging stations for electric GSE are located on the ramp level around the C gates, as well as portions of the A, B, and D gates. The stations are initially being used by Southwest, Allegiant, and United Airlines. This is a significant step towards reducing the usage of petroleum-based ground support equipment and reducing the airport's overall level of air pollution. Together with other sustainable practices at the airport, like repurposing used materials and increasing efficiency of the airport's cooling system, use of electric equipment allows the airport to modernize operations while limiting environmental impacts. Airport personnel train year-round to ensure they're prepared in case of an emergency. Every three years, all those involved in airport safety come together for a full-scale emergency exercise. Here's a look at the most recent drill. The Federal Aviation Administration requires most U.S. airports to complete an emergency preparedness exercise, known as the Triennial, once every three years in order to maintain their certification. First, you let Engine 95 know, okay? LAS partnered with agencies throughout the community to hold its triennial exercise in September. It's great to have all the agencies working together in the valley. Uh, in the event of a big incident, we're all going to be working hand in hand. And experiences like this get us together, let us practice our skill sets, and uh, get on the same page before a real incident. A mock disaster complete with smoke, sirens, victim actors, and emergency vehicles was staged on the airfield. Local fire, police, and rescue personnel coordinated their response with airport personnel just as they would during a real-world event. Additionally, ambulances and a rescue helicopter were used in the drill to transport the injured from the scene. There are so many things happening at the same time. There are many agencies involved. We all have our rules and regulations and processes, but we have to come together and get to that common point, which of course is saving lives and then recovery. A key element of the drill was community-wide participation. While airport personnel regularly train for aircraft incidents, other agencies don't. Emergency responders unaccustomed to working in an airport setting gain experience and knowledge, and the exercise reinforces their ability to work in a stressful and unfamiliar situation. When you're dealing with a, an event that, of this magnitude, you want to get all the assets in line as quickly as possible so that you can utilize the efficiency of the system. The exercise was rolled out through a progressive scenario that limited participants' advanced knowledge of what was unfolding around them. This technique is meant to improve their ability to react quickly and correctly during a stressful situation. Health District, you on? Key personnel from participating agencies watched and responded to the incident from within the airport's emergency operations center as they gathered pertinent information. Public information officers from various agencies were in close communication to sort out facts, prepare a simulated news release, and keep the public and the media informed through social media. When the incident first happens, the communication is uh, very small and in spectrum, but it gets big very fast. In order to do that, that's where it comes into working together and understanding what each other's roles are. And we use the incident command system to do that. And that all comes back into the emergency operations center, which then formulates all the information so they can support the incident scene. The full-scale simulation was staged at a location near the ramp area, far enough removed to minimize the impact on normal airport operations. 
As a result of months of planning and preparation, combined with this realistic practice, the airport and the agencies that support it are better prepared should there be a real emergency. When you're ready to fly, know that LAS is all in for passenger health and safety. For all the latest, check us out on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And remember to use all the resources of our website, McCarran.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Flight Path.